Hi guys. How you doing? Happy Tuesday. Feels like a Monday. It is not. It is a Tuesday, you guys. I hope that everybody had a wonderful, long, relaxing weekend. It was Memorial Day weekend here in the States for those of you who live here. So I hope that you had an extra day off to enjoy yourself. Hi, Leah. How are you? Hi, Cynthia. Hi, Debbie. How are you? How are you? How are you? Oh, it's hot in here. <laughs> it's on here. Hi, Nicole. How are you? There's Miss Patty. It's so good to see you guys. I really do. I hope that you had a great weekend. I hope that you had some time to rest and relax. I actually worked all through the weekend. And at this point, it's just kind of, I guess I'm getting used to it. But I really hope that there comes a time where I can actually like stop on the weekends and, you know, have like an entire day, not just part of a day, <laughs> you know? That's the problem with running your own little business. I don't think a lot of people understand, you know, if you work for a company, you kind of take for granted the fact that you have, you know, you have your weekends. But when you work from home and you own your own business, work is always where you are. And there's always things that need to be done. So, you know, I end up giving up my weekends a lot of times. I do try to find some time, but it doesn't always work out. So for those of you who are working at home, I know you, you can sympathize. So, it is a brand new week. It is also a brand new month. Hello, welcome June. How cool. We're all ready, ready for the summer. I feel like here in the south, we didn't, uh, we didn't get much spring. It just goes from like winter to summer, as far as the temperatures are concerned. So, um, we're already feeling the summertime weather here. It is hot. It is sticky. I'm sweating in the air conditioning. So, let's see. I got a couple of things to talk about before we get started with today's project. Today's project is going to be a really easy one, a fun one, and I hope that you guys enjoy this one and recreate it because I think there are a lot of you at home that have some quick links. And if you have not paid any attention to your quick links in a while, this is a good one to pull them out, dust them off, and use them as a component for a pair of earrings. So, uh, or a pendant, right? Or a pendant makes no difference. Um, but before we get started with that, I just want to touch on a couple of little things. First and foremost, I want to thank everybody who made purchases from my Etsy shop last week. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this past weekend when I worked all weekend, what I was doing most of the time was actually packing orders and I am so thankful for that. You guys, this has been the busiest my shop has ever been. Uh, I had I filled the most orders that I have ever filled over this past weekend. So thank you to everybody who made purchases. Um, I appreciate that more than you will ever know. That Etsy shop right now is kind of my lifeline. So um, it was, what are the words? It was helpful. I don't really know how else to put it. It's helpful. It's helpful. A lot of you know that I'm in a transitioning phase in my life and um, the sales from my Etsy shop and when you give to the tip jar are impacting my life and my children's life in a way that I don't think, um, for those of you who don't know what I'm going through, don't really understand. And um, so I'm just, I'm very thankful. I'm very thankful. That being said, because yesterday was a holiday, um, I did not get to ship anything. In fact, the U or the yeah the USPS post person was here just a few minutes ago, picking up all of those orders and taking them off. So all of your orders have gone out today. If you purchase things over the weekend, those are being shipped right now as we speak. And uh, it took her forever to scan every single little package. It was so exciting though, because I was like, oh look at them all going off to their homes. Um, so everything's running like a day late because of the holiday. So if you're used to getting yours on a certain day of the week, if you order over the weekend, uh, just know it'll probably be a day later. Anyway, also talking about the shipping, I want to, there are two things that I want to mention um, before we move on. So the first one being that once your package leaves my hands and is now in the hands of the postal service, I have the same amount of information as you do, which is all I've got is a tracking number. I have the same tracking number that you do. So if your package is on its way to your house and it gets stranded in, I don't know, Boca Raton or it ends up in, you know, Tempe, Arizona and it's just sitting there, 
I can see it and you can see it, but neither one of us can do anything about it. And it's very frustrating. And I just want you to know that I feel your frustration when you reach out to me and you say, my package is just sitting out there. I don't understand what can we do. And it hurts my heart because I can't fix it for you. I can't do anything. Once that package leaves my hands, I have no control over what the post service is doing with it. So if this happens, this is what I tell everybody, okay? If this happens, take your tracking number to your post office, give it to your postmaster and say, can you locate this package? Can you tell me why it is held up? And a lot of times, if you're really, really super nice to your postmaster, I know mine very, very well. If you're very nice to them, they <laughs> will actually contact the post office in that area and they can tell you like, it's it's held up because of ABC and it should be there in this many days or whatever. I unfortunately don't have access to that information so I can't tell it to you. I wish that I could but the best thing that you can do is just contact your post office with your tracking number, give it to them and let them make the calls for you and find out where your package is. I wish I could help you but unfortunately when it leaves my hands I got nothing. <laughs> So my frustration and your frustration are the same on that. Just know that our postal workers are doing the best that they can. They are still working with short staff. There are still problems in the postal, you know, in the post office in general. And so just be patient with them. I have no idea why it is that a package will leave my house and go to California before it comes back to Washington, D.C. I got no ideas, <laughs> but I know that it happens all the time. So just know. Um, let's see. Yeah, Joan says she signs up for notifications as soon as she gets the tracking number. I do that too. In fact, I have an account with with the Postal Service. And you don't have to be a small business owner to get a, a um, an account with your USPS. And it's a little app that you can have on your phone and you can actually watch your packages as they go around and get notifications. You can also schedule pickups, deliveries, all of those things. Um, in an app on your phone. So they are trying, guys. They're trying hard. They know it's been a bad two, you know, year going into a year and a half um, with the post. And so they're trying their best to make things better. Um, okay, so the second thing that I want to mention is also related to orders in my Etsy shop. And then we'll get right into the project because I don't want to waste any more time. Um, but guys, when you are shopping in my Etsy shop, there are a few categories to choose from. There are jewelry supplies, there are beads, there are um, finished jewelry, okay? Because originally that's all my Etsy shop was. I didn't sell beads or jewelry making supplies or anything like that. All I sold was finished pieces and those are broken down into necklaces, earrings, bracelets, and rings. In addition to my Etsy shop is also a category called kits and that's where all of our Feel Good Friday kits or just kits that happen to end up in the shop in between there, um, they fall under that category. So when you are shopping in my Etsy shop, please be mindful that not only are there kits, but there are finished pieces of jewelry. And I try to distinguish the two by making sure that every time it is a kit, it will say kit in the description as the very first word. You'll, you do not have to question it. You'll know the very first word in the description says kit, and then it tells you what the kit is. If it's a finished piece of jewelry, it doesn't say kit. It's also not listed if you, um, you know, if you break down the, the Etsy shop by category, if you click on kits, it'll show you everything that's a kit. If it is a finished piece of jewelry, just know. Just know that there have been times when people have accidentally ordered um, a finished piece of jewelry. And here's the thing. As much as I love you guys, I don't take, it, I don't take returns um, on finished pieces of jewelry. Not because I don't love you, but because I'm just one person. I'm not Walmart. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a process. So please just be mindful when you are shopping in the Etsy shop that you are in fact searching or shopping for kits or if you are shopping for the finished pieces because I do have a large clientele of people who just want the finished pieces and don't want the kits. So just keep that in mind, okay? Um, whew, let's see. Oh, Joan, if you can drop a link. We had a couple of questions about that um, Etsy shop. If you'll drop a link, that would be great. Guys, I've got another big update coming up this week. I've got fantastic kits that are in the works. I'm working on those right now. They're right next to me. I can't wait. They're very beachy vacation themed because now we are in June. So... That is um, what we've got coming up. Last thing, I promise, trolls on YouTube, 
you have a fast forward button, okay? <laughs> Rest of you on YouTube, I love you. <laughs> um, last thing. I normally have been telling you guys when the dogs are in the room with me from now on just assume that the dogs are always here they're kind of at the moment acting as my security system um, and my personal bodyguards um, from now until I don't know when we're just kind of joined at the hip um, they're even sleeping in my room these days so please know that any of the heavy breathing and panting that you hear is not me it isn't me and I don't have any fun friends around <laughs> It's just the dogs. So they're going to be probably just constantly in the room with me. I apologize if you find that distracting or if you find it unprofessional. Um, just know that right now for the time being in this phase in my life, it is necessary that they be with me while I am here. Okay. Whew. I got through all of that. <laughs> now we can talk about the project. We can talk about, oh, thank you for, somebody's mentioning, a couple of people have mentioned my eye makeup. Why, thank you. <laughs> it's Fresh Tuesday eye makeup. I don't know. It's the same all the time. <laughs> it must look extra good today. I don't know. So the project for today is earrings. These can very easily be turned into a pendant. You guys, with the flower in the middle, they're so tropical. I'm like feeling the tropical vibe right now. Wait till you see the kits for this week. Oh, I love it. So... These are a quick link, some beads, and pretty much that's it, right? I'm going to show you how to do it. Easy peasy. I've got some angry faces here. I'm so sorry, angry people. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Don't be angry. All good things here. All right, let's turn around and get to it, shall we? <laughs> Sabrina says, don't pick on the dogs. Oh my gosh, you guys, look at what I have. I have a bead mat that is white. And it says beetle on, on it because my dear, dear friend Meredith sewed this for me and sent it to me. Is that not the sweetest thing ever? So you guys know I've been endlessly looking for a white bead map. She sent me this one that has the beetle on logo on it. So I'm feeling extra special today. All right. So let me adjust just a little bit because I feel like the tripod is a little, little shaky. Okay. So here are the earrings. Um, let's see. Okay. So we've got a quick link here in the middle and you guys, I know a lot of you already have quick links in your stash. If you do not have quick links, they are these really handy little things that beetle on makes. They are basically just links. These are the biggest ones that they make. They're 30 millimeter and they have this really pretty diamond cut on them. However, if you are not feeling that extra sparkle, you can flip these over to the plain side on the back. However, they come in different sizes, right? So this is the biggest, but they come in a variety of different sizes. And there are these little peanut connectors that you use to put them together. If you don't want to put them together and make your own chain links out of them, you can use them as a component. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to wire wrap around our component. This is just going to save us a step from making our own component, which you could do if you wanted to. But sometimes if you're feeling a little like, mm, I just don't feel like it today, a pre-made component is the way to go. So I'm going to be using one of these 30 millimeter quick links. However, if this is too big of an earring for you, use a smaller quick link because they've got them. They also have them in triangles, which I absolutely adore. Okay, so we are just going to wire wrap some four millimeter beads in two layers, which we've never done before. It's not hard, um, but it's pretty cool because once you get the hang of it, then you can build your layers out and make these huge statement pieces that would make amazing um, pendants. Add the little flower to the center if you want to, and you've got like tropical vacation earrings. Um, I'm feeling it, loving it, loving it. Okay, so let me dump my beads out here on my brand new bead map, which I'm so, so proud of. So I'm just using some little rondelles. They are like, I think they're four, it's either three, four, or four, five millimeter. Um, but the main number is just that they're four. They're these little faceted rondelles. They're kind of a mauve purple color. They're not quite purple, but they're not quite anything else either. I don't know. <laughs> That's what we're going to use. And it takes a bit of these to go around. You're going to need about, let's see. You're going to need, well, I'm going to need some wire. That'll probably be helpful. There it is. 
You're going to need some 24 gauge German style wire for this. If you don't have German style wire, you can use your artistic wire for this if you want to. Um, I find that it works pretty much the same. Uh, it does feel different, but as far as this kind of wire wrapping is concerned, I think you're good. Um, you're going to need about 36 inches of this. That might be a little bit too much, might be a little bit too little. Also, keep in mind that you need to um, make adjustments in your measurements when it is uh, when it comes to using a smaller component, just kind of eyeballing a little measurement of the wire here. So I'm not measuring exact, but you guys, 36 inches will get it for you. Okay. All right. So all we want to do is we want to anchor our wire to our quick link. And I'm actually going to turn my quick link over to the back. And let's see, I can't remember which direction. So Albert, stop that. <laughs> That's the one thing about having him in here is that he's so grunty. So I'm going to anchor my wire to the quick link. Now the diamond cut side, that's still going to be the front, but I'm working on the back as I wire wrap. And I'll show you why when we get to the end, but feel free to do this either direction. Okay. Particularly if your quick link is plain. So I'm just going to take my wire and I'm going to anchor it to, he's huffing at me now, <laughs> anchor it to my quick link with about three or four good wraps. Okay. And you can go ahead and trim that tail off if you want to. I'm actually going to leave mine, but notice the direction of my wire. The wire, the way that I have anchored this wire, it is coming from the front, which is this diamond cut side. So, but the way I'm holding it, it's coming from the back this way. Do you see what I'm saying? So just keep that, keep that in mind if you want your wire wraps to look like mine. The reason that I mention this is because it does look different on the front and on the back. So this being the front, this being the back. Can you see the difference? You see how we have these really long stems of the wire? Whereas on the front, they're not quite as long. They're a little bit shorter. So I want the shorter ones on the front and I want these longer ones on the back. Depending on which side you like the best, you can make the front or the back. But I don't want the long stems facing me. So we're gonna keep those on the back as we're working. All right, hold on, I dropped my quick link. Okay. So all we're going to do is just pick up one quick link at a time. Oh, somebody says, what kind of dogs? Hold on. <laughs> Ruth, Ruth wants to know what kind of dogs. So I have a German Shepherd and a Golden Retriever. Albert is the Golden Retriever. He's very grunty. And Cooper is my um, German Shepherd and he's very whiny. So usually if you hear one grunting, you'll know which one is which. <laughs> If you're one whining, that would be Cooper. But they're named after Twin Peaks. You guys ever watch Twin Peaks? Remember that old show? Special Agent Cooper and uh, Special Agent Albert Rosenfeld. Yeah, those are my dogs. Okay, anyway, moving on. <laughs> so I've dropped a bead down. It is sitting right on the edge of the component. I'm going to hold that bead in place. I'm going to take the wire and kind of bend it over, right? That's where we get that long stem of the wire. And then I'm just going to take the wire through the center of the quick link and wrap around the component. And I'm going to wrap around. Yes, you can see I'm at the end. Don't let me forget. I'm going to wrap around our component about three times so that um, I have enough room. Okay, it's not just a security measure to have three wraps in there. It's actually a spacing measure. You want to be sure that you give yourself at least three uh, wraps in between there so that your beads are not sitting right on top of each other. If you wrap around, or I'm sorry, if you add a bead and wrap once and then try to add another bead, they're going to crowd each other out. So you want to be sure that you give yourself at least three wraps. You can see I'm coming up for the fourth wrap. I'm going to add my bead. Um, that's just going to make sure that every bead has its own special spot on the component and they don't risk cracking each other. See how that's just enough space for the next bead. You don't want them to crack each other or to push each other out. It will, it'll mess up the design. Okay, so there's another bead. I'm gonna wrap around three times. I 
And guys, if your wire wraps are not as tight as you would like them to be, after you've done your wire wraps, come in with either your chain nose pliers or your bent chain nose pliers and squeeze them together. Don't be afraid to use your tools. It's okay if your wire wraps are not, you know, nice and all lined up. It's okay. Use your tool to make them do that. Not everybody can get a wire wrap lined up on the first try. Sometimes you walk, you work along and you get several that are all lined up and then you got one that just kind of has a mind of its own. So use your tools to fix it whenever you feel like you need to. There's no shame in that. That's what the tools are for. All right. Oh, Nicole, we're sending you love, friend. Dropping another bead down, bringing the wire down. I just kind of bend it as it comes out of the bead. And then wrap around. Hi, Jane. Oh, gosh. Prudence says, how much wire did you cut? I always cut not enough. So I always, I have the opposite problem, Prudence. I actually cut more than I ever need. You're only going to need about 36 inches for this, but I probably cut like 48 um, just because I always make sure that I have extra wire um, because I, I hate to be short on things. So just for a second before we move on, okay, because this is going to take us a minute, but I just want to point out again the difference between the front and the back. This is actually going to be the back of my pendant, or I'm sorry, the back of my earring because we have the longer um, little stems of the wire, and you can see the difference on the front. See how the little stems are shorter, and they don't, they're not, they don't take up nearly as much um, room visually. That's why this is going to be the front, Okay. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Like, that is a cool look. It's just that this is the look that I'm going for today. Okay. So, that's why we're working this direction. Okay. So, another bead. Now, basically, a lot of this is just going to be repetition. So, we're going to do it. We're going to do all of them. We're going to go all the way around the component one time. Bend the wire. wrap around something else to make a note of as you're going is that you can also kind of scoot the beads if you need to to scoot them closer together or pull them further apart until you have filled up the entire component you've got a little bit of wiggle room everybody here likes to wiggle give it a little wiggle if you need to Hey guys, just a, um, since this is mostly repetitive, you're just going to be watching my hands do this. I just want to uh, thank you guys for those of you who came to watch me over on Sam's Bead Shop on Saturday night for that fun design on the fly. That was so much fun. It was a little stressful for me. Designing on the fly is always stressful. And he has such amazing designers on that I was worried that I wouldn't do a good job, but I think the bracelet that we made turned out really beautifully. All right, so it's tricky when you're using a lot of wire here. This is a long piece of wire, but it's necessary because we're actually doing two layers of these, um, these beads. So just be patient if you are not used to working with long pieces of wire. It can be kind of frustrating, but I do think Sam and I work well together. We have very we have um we have personalities that go together very, very well. Our personalities complement each other. I love working with Sam and hope that he and I can do more things together in the future. He's such a sweetheart. So we're pretty close to halfway. <laughs> I think it would be fun for me and Sam to get together in person. I feel like there would be lots of shenanigans. Do I have a, recur a referral code? I do for Sam's Bead Shop. So it works for the... Um, 
the monthly bead box. So if you wanna sign up for the monthly bead box, you can use the coupon code Sarah, S-A-R-A, no H, um, when you go to check out and you'll get $5 off. And I get a little bit of commission from that just in case you guys were curious, um, which is so sweet of him because he doesn't have to do that, but he's taken good care of me. So I, I appreciate everybody's sales and I appreciate Sam so much. So um, okay, hold on just a second. I feel like I did. I made a I made a mistake. You guys want to see? <laughs> I hope you do, because you're gonna see anyway. So I was following the path of the wire, right? Except right here, and this is such a good example to show you guys. I'm always telling you guys where, um, to, or not where, but to follow the natural path of the wire. Don't try to wrap two things on the same side. And that's exactly what I did. I wasn't paying attention. And look, the wire was coming from the back. I added the bead and I went to the back. So it's actually both of those wraps are on the same side. And you can see how funny it looks. It just doesn't sit the way that it's supposed to. That's why I'm always telling you when we're wire wrapping to a component, you want to be sure that you are being mindful and paying attention to the natural path of that wire. So the wire coming from the back at a bead and then the natural path is to wrap to the front because that's where the wire would be going if you didn't have a bead. So just keep that in mind. That was a good opportunity to show that to you guys. So I just undid it, right? No harm, no foul. And just rewrap even with those little kinks in the wire it's okay because you won't ever notice them because they got wrapped back in so you don't even see those little those little kinks from where we had to undo it all right another bead uh-oh I love the conversations that are going on between you guys. I apologize if I'm missing anything important. I was trying to scroll. Whoops. I was trying. Sorry. I was trying to scroll back and got a little distracted. Sorry. Little distraction here. And now my tripod is wanting. Hold on, guys. It's wanting to loosen up on me. There we go. We're back in business now. All right. Just a few more beads to add, and then we're gonna go up a second, a section. Now I'm using size four, four millimeter beads for this project. Um, Cause I wanted to keep my beads kind of small, but you can use whatever size beads you want to for this, just so you know. Um, you can, you can add C beads to this. You can use larger beads for this. It's still going to work. The um, technique is going to look the same or it's going to work the same. It's just going to have a little bit different spacing. But I did it again. Are you kidding? Do you see that? I have to stop talking when I'm wrapping. I did it a second time. That's, it's, it feels like a Monday, y'all. <laughs> Undo it. Pay attention, Sarah. Oh my gosh. You know it gets serious when I refer to myself and by name. <laughs> yep, I did it again. I fixed it though. There we go. <laughs> Everybody said, wrong way, wrong way. I know, I caught it, I caught it. <laughs> That's funny. Because there's a little bit of a delay. All right, bead on, wrapping to the front. <laughs> Make sure that I got it right this time. I actually had somebody recently, you guys know that like my YouTube crowd, I have a great, um, 
I have a great community on YouTube, a lot of people over there that don't do Facebook. But then I do have a lot of trolls on YouTube, so many more than we ever get here on Facebook. And I actually had a lady leave me a comment on YouTube. I get really nasty comments over there that told me that she hated it when I laughed, when I made a mistake, or just in general, that the sound of my laugh irritated her, and it irritated her so much that she could not finish watching the project. I was like, you know what? That's okay. <laughs> I didn't say anything back to her, um, obviously. I tried to just avoid all that, but I thought to myself, you know, the sound of laughter, if that annoys you, I'm just so sorry for whatever you're going through. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know she meant that to be mean and like to cut me to the core, but what ended up happening was I just felt sadness for her because even the funniest, silliest laughs in the world, you know, laughter's contagious. And everybody has a different one, right? And if you can't laugh and find joy in the world, like you're in just a dark place. That's so sad and you need people to come in and help you. Get out of the dark place, right? We got to have humor. That's my, humor is my coping mechanism. So, <laughs> Deb says, I love your laugh. Thank you. I used to be very um, self-conscious of my laugh, but then I kind of, you know, as I aged, I realized everybody, um, you know, everybody has, laughs are very much like your voice, you know? Everyone's is different, and they're all just so, it's like, it's like music, I guess. I hear laughter as music. It's a good thing. It's good for the soul to laugh. So I hope that person smiles and finds a way to laugh. All right, I'm gonna add one more bead. You can see we're pretty close to the end here, but this is too much of a gap here for me. So I do want to go ahead and try to add one more bead. And I will wiggle if I need to, to make room for that bead. Well, somebody said, why even comment? It, that's the difference between Facebook and YouTube. A lot of times people on YouTube, the bad people, because there are really good people on YouTube, but the bad people that are just grumpy, um, they, they have, because they can hide behind their computer, they don't have to, what's the word? They don't, they don't have to take any responsibility for the things that they say or do because they can hide behind their computer. And here on Facebook, you can't really do that because you've got a profile page and, you know, people have more access to you. So I feel like, you know, they, they have their bad days and they just take it out on other people to make them, people who hurt other people are hurting, you know? Where's my cutter tool? <laughs> Where'd my cutter go? But I am always of the mind, you know, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. But it just that those rules just don't apply over on YouTube, you know. Okay, so you can see where now our wire wraps are meeting each other. This is going to actually be the space where we will attach our jump rings to, um, you know, create the rest of our earring. However, we're not done yet. We want to keep going because we want to build this up an extra layer. So... We're gonna wrap around those wraps that are still there. Exactly, no accountability. They don't have to be accountable for their actions. And that's, you know, that's all well and good, but one day they will have to be. So <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say about that, right? Uh, what goes around comes around. So put good out there and good will come back. You put, if you put meanness out there, I'm sorry about what happens, you know? Sometimes you get meanness back and that's just not good, but whatever okay moving on <laughs> all right so we're ready to move on to the next level so what i've done is i you can see i did two wire wraps around the wraps that are already existing it's going to make it a little chunky monkey that might drive you crazy but there's really no other way to do it and i don't mind the chunky monkey so my wire is coming from the inside we're still wire wrapping in the same path that we were going right but we're going to take that wire up at an angle behind this first bead. So it's coming up at an angle. And we want to sit a bead up here between these two in this little space up here. So we're kind of creating our own level of beads. So let me show you how we do that. It's super, super easy and it goes much faster than the wraps around the first time. 
So you just wanna take a bead and add it to your wire. Okay, and it's gonna to wanna to fall to the back, okay? It, that's what it's gonna to wanna to do. Don't get frustrated with it. Push it up there with your finger. Put it where you want it. Sit it between those two beads. I wish it was a little bit brighter so you could see, but I, I feel like you get it, right? We're gonna sit it right up there between those two beads, and then we're gonna take the wire and we're gonna bend it down between the two beads. Don't come over here, right down here, okay? and take it and wrap it around the back just once and bring it up at a diagonal behind the next bead, okay? So we're not doing three wraps to add these next bead up. We are going to, um, we're gonna do one wrap, add a bead, one wrap, okay? No three wraps for this. And they'll all stay exactly where they're supposed to. So let me show you again. I'm gonna show you a bunch because we're gonna go all the way around, but I'm gonna go slow here a couple of times so that you can see. So I'm dropping the bead down and it wants to fall back here to the back to where the component is. Put your finger up there, place that bead between those two beads, hold it there, and bend your wire to the front between those beads. Okay, wrap around to the back. Whoops, made a little kink in my wire here. Got another little kink in my wire. It's just part of using these really long pieces of wire. It's just sort of what happens, okay? And you can see how there's actually a space between that bead and the component, and that's what we want. We want that layer of beads to kind of be up out of the way. It's touching these two beads, but it's not touching the component, okay? So we're just gonna keep going. Just remember the part about this one, about this layer, is that there's only one wrap. Drop your bead down, place it where you want it to go, hold it there with your finger, bend the wire, take it through the center of the component and out the back, come out at a little bit of an angle here. Oh gosh. <laughs> I just totally flung that bead across the room. Oh well, <laughs> it's a good thing we've got a pile. <laughs> Drop a bead down. Place that bead where we want it to go. Bring the wire to the front, down between the two. Sharon, this is a quick link that I got from Beadalon. They have a bunch of them in different sizes, uh, but you know, any round component, if you've got some chunky chain, I meant to say that at the beginning, if you've got some chunky chain, you can always take a link out of your chunky chain. The speed is a little messed up. Um, you know, and cut it free and use a, a link of that. I like to use my big chains for those. Hi, Angie, miss your face too, my friend. All right, dropping the bead down, holding it in place, bringing a wire to the front. Ooh, ring in the bell. Bring in the wire. Add an angle and then adding another bead. Okay. Put the bead where you want it. Hold it in place because it's not going to stay there unless you hold it. Bring the wire to the front around the back. Um, let's see, question. Kendall wants to know if this can be done like the horseshoe type one last week when you put a few beads on the wire and then wrap it. Yes, 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 yes. So um, she, Kendall's asking, you guys remember the earrings that we made last week where, got a pair of them right here, where we did three beads? So you absolutely can do this exact same technique and pop a bead right in here between these spaces or pop three beads right here. Right? So yes, you can do the exact same thing with three beads instead of a single bead. And it looks really, really cool. <laughs> In fact, you can, and I, I did mention this at the beginning when we very first got started, but you can mix and match those and you can build up really far. So we're only doing two layers of beads here, but 
you could you can come again right and add beads in these spaces and just keep building outwards or you can do rows of three and then rows of one rows of three rows of one so you can mix and match when it comes to this little technique and it all works exactly the same uh, but you're going to get different looks depending on how many beads you use and all of that but the technique works it's still exactly the same technique just dropping your beads down holding them where you want them and then just attaching them to the component just know that the more levels that you go up the more wire it's going to take and you do tend to get crowded with your wire so if you're going to go more than two layers like we're doing here i would probably step my wire down so we're using 24 gauge wire I would probably use 26 gauge wire if I were going to do more than two layers just so that I have extra room for that smaller wire. It doesn't take up nearly as much. Um, let's see. Christine says, is there a difference using sterling silver wire? I want to wire wrap a stone nugget and I want it to look elegant. So um, there really is not much of a difference other than um, really kind of the feeling of the sterling silver wire. A lot of times sterling silver wire can either be much harder uh, temper or it can be a softer temper. It really just kind of depends on how it's been treated. However, um, they're both going to tarnish and that's just me being completely honest with you. The tarnish time on the sterling silver is probably going to be faster um, just because sterling silver tends to tarnish pretty quickly. Whereas this still this silver German style wire has been treated to last a really, really long time before it tarnishes. Does it tarnish? Yes, it does. They both do. So I really don't... Um, I can't really say that I prefer one over the other when it comes to the tarnishing because they're both going to. Um, but you can um, you can polish them both. Yep, 0.925 will tarnish. Absolutely. All silver will tarnish. I get a cloth. Let me show you my cloth. I keep a cloth handy. It's nasty, but that's tarnish. And that's from all of my silver. You can see where I clean up those little lines. That's from chain. And you can use both sides. It's not a plain cloth. It actually has silver polish in it. So you have to be sure that you're not just buying a lint-free cloth. You've got to buy one that actually has silver polish in it. But you can use it and use it and use it forever. Um, but I always keep one of those handy because all of this will tarnish eventually. That's just kind of the name of the game. All right. That's our entire component. See how cool it looks? We've gone all the way around. Now, this is where you decide if you like the front or the back, right? This is the back because for me, I don't want all the little spokes or the little twigs, or whatever you want to call them. However, it is a cool look, and it looks awesome. But when you flip it over, those little spokes or twigs are a little bit shorter. So that this is going to be the front of my pendant, okay? Or earring. I'm sorry, I forget we're making earrings here. Now, I'm going to wrap around these wraps right here that already exist. And now I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to trim. So I had a little bit of, I had a little bit, I had about 12 inches of wire left over. So I, I told you I cut way more wire than I needed. 36 inches is going to get you all the way around twice. Um, and then you'll still have a little bit to spare, but I, I way cut way too much. So now our wire is free um, and we're ready to move on to the next part of this. So let me grab my findings here. My son just texted me, you guys. I know you don't you don't necessarily care about my personal life, but it's just funny. My son just texted me. I just happened to look up. I had texted him earlier. He left to go. He got up early this morning to go get the title for his truck. And he, <laughs> he left early. He was mad because he had to leave early. And 
I sent him these text messages before the live and I was like, you've been gone a really long time. Are you okay? He just texted me and he was like, mom, I've been home for hours. I've been asleep. <laughs> I got home a long time ago. You just didn't know it. Like, wow, I'm such a great mom. I wasn't even paying attention to the fact that my child came home. <laughs> Whoops. Okay. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lorena. <laughs> oh, all right. So we're going to put a little bead in the middle of ours. We're going to use one of these beautiful chat glass hibiscus flowers. <laughs> and guess what we're going to do? We're going to do a knotted head pin. So if Wanda's in the house, I don't know if she is or not. I don't think I've seen Wanda today, but she may watch the replay later. She always says knotted head pin alert. So just know knotted head pin going on here. We're going to do a knotted head pin and then we're going to attach this to our ear wire with a couple of uh, jump rings. However, let me tell you, if you wanted to do a wrapped loop here, like a messy wrapped loop with the leftover wire that you had, you absolutely can. The only reason that I didn't do it that way and I'm using jump rings, number one is because I wanted to hang a bead down here and this is just the easiest way. There's Wanda. <laughs> she is here. <laughs> I wanted to do a, um, or I wanted to hang a bead here and the easiest way to do that is with jump rings. Um, also, it's a little bit easier, so I wanted to make this like easy for everybody, even beginners, because everybody can do this part. Not everybody is really good at the wrapped loop part, but I think everybody can attach some jump rings, so that's why. But if you want to do the whole thing as a wrapped loop, please feel free to use that leftover wire to do that. I'm just... I'm just not today. I'm, I'm feeling like keeping it easy, so that's what we're going to do. Okay, so for our knotted head pin... We are going to use a piece of 22 gauge German style wire. You really only need about three inches of this or less. I have way more than I always need. Um, I am, let's see, there's a question. What kind of cleaning cloth do you recommend? Is it okay sterling and plated metal? So <laughs> you want the truth about my cleaning cloth? It's so funny. Mine's actually, <laughs> I actually came with a, my Pandora bracelet a million years ago, a million years ago, and it has the stuff in it. You can get them on um, Amazon. You just want to be sure that it's lint-free silver polish, not just a lint-free. There's a big difference, and I use it on everything. I use it on my gold. I use it on my silver. I use it on my platings. I use it on absolutely everything, and it has not ever, it's never hurt anything. Um, do I have a specific brand that I can recommend? Not really, just because that's the only one that I've ever had. <laughs> and it's lived a very long, long knife. Life, not knife. What? Okay. So we're going to do a knotted headband. I'm grabbing the tail end of my 22 gauge wire at the very, very tip of my round nose pliers. I'm going to roll this wire around the tip of the pliers once. And I know that I've gone completely around because I can see that tiny little flush cut in the wire. I'm going to go a second time directly underneath. Notice how I'm using the pliers to turn the wire. I'm kind of opening and closing. I'm going slow for you guys. And I want to stop when I see that flush cut in the wire again. So that makes two rotations, two coils around the very tip of my round nose pliers. Not taking them off of the tool yet. I'm going to take the wire and bend it out this direction. It's running underneath the two coils and away from the handle of the tool. Don't take the wire the other direction. That's why I like to leave it on the tool before I make that bend. Okay. Now, taking it off of the tool, you can see there's our little loops. I take the tail end of the wire and I'm going to curl it back and bend it back through those two coils. So it looks sort of like a little lasso here, a little speech bubble, right? And I'm gonna come in with my nylon jaw pliers. Do not do this without nylon jaw pliers. If you do, you will strip the coating off of the outside of this wire and it will make it um, real jaggedy and awful. <laughs> Just take my word for it, okay? So you wanna hold the nylon jaw pliers and your, your your little coils so that the coils are right up against the edge. There's no day daylight between those, okay? Now my tail's coming out this way. I'm gonna take another pair of pliers. 
grab that wire and pull. And when I pull, I want to pull really strong. You see, I'm kind of shaking. That's how that's how tight I'm pulling. It's going to pull a little knot in the end of our wire, a little rosette, little floral shape, if you will. Okay, I'm going to take that off. And now I have my own knotted head pin. Now, why does this matter? Well, it matters for a lot of reasons. Number one, it's really cost effective. Um, I go through a ton of head pins a year and I can't even begin. It's probably in the millions because of my job. You, on the other hand, maybe don't go through nearly as many or maybe you do. I don't know. But cost effective to use my wire scraps to make myself some head pins. Second reason why this is a cool thing to do is because your wire head pins will always match the rest of the wire that you're using with silver it's not so much of an issue but with gold sometimes it makes it makes a huge difference because sometimes you can be using your gold that goes around it's a nice golden color but maybe the head pins are more of a yellow gold and they just don't match so being able to make your own components will make sure that all of your wire will match and for me that's a huge deal i hate it when my colors don't match so, okay, dropping my flower down on top of that. If that knot is too big for you and too bulky, you can go down and use 24 gauge wire instead of 22 gauge wire, okay? Just so you know. All right, now I'm gonna do a wrapped loop. So I'm grabbing that wire right where it is exiting the bead and I'm going to give it a bend. When I take the pliers away, I've already got the room there for my wire wrap, so I don't have to do any measuring. Coming in with my round nose pliers, holding the wire, I'm taking the wire up and over. I'm gonna rotate the pliers so I can take the wire over to the other side. That's gonna close up that loop. I'm gonna switch hands, and then I'm going to wire wrap in that space between our loop and the top of the bead. And I've got room for about three wraps. So when I take this off of the tool, my loop is ready. All I gotta do is just come back here and trim off the tail and if you can't get in super, super close with your cutter tool, come in with your pliers and just kind of push that wire and tuck it down so that it's not sticking out, okay? So you've got yourself a wire wrapped loop on a knotted head pin that you did. Now, we're just going to connect all of this. This part is the easy part, the construction. So I'm gonna take a four millimeter jump ring between two pairs of pliers. I'm gonna walk that open. I'm gonna thread that on to the wrapped loop and I'm going to close that back. Make sure you get a good closure on that so that doesn't your little wrap loop doesn't sneak out on you. I'm going to open a six millimeter jump ring because this one needs to be a little bit bigger so that it can clear the component. But I also need it to grab the four millimeter jump ring on top of our flower. Hooking it here. And I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and thread on this four millimeter jump ring. Just drop that on there. And then close this six millimeter jump ring back. Now it's at an, it's at an awkward little angle. So it might take a minute to get it closed, but get that closed back. This four millimeter jump ring is going to be the one that's up here on the top where we attach our ear wire. So I'm going to come over here, open up my ear wire, attach it, whoops, attach it to that jump ring on the top, and then close that back, and we're done. Now there's a little bit of movement in there. There's a little wiggle room for that six millimeter jump ring to kind of move around, but for the most part, it's going to stay right there in the center. It's not going to make your earring hang, you know, at a funny a funny lopsided look or anything, but there you go. All right, guys, brighten that up a little bit with the, these are so pretty. So I did a combination here of this mauve color and maroon, which I think, I don't know, originally I wasn't so sure about it, but when I put it together, I was like, oh, it looks really good together. Um, anything can go here in the center. I was feeling tropical, so I went with the hibiscus, but you could put whatever you wanted to in the center. And of course, you can make this much smaller, go with a smaller component, a smaller quick link. And 
um, make, you know, a smaller pair of earrings, or you could turn this into a pendant. It will look really lovely on a necklace, right? Um, string it on some cotton cord for summer. It would be awesome. All right, I'm going to turn you guys around, and I'm going to try them on so you can see what they look like, and then we will say our goodbyes. Joan said, believe it or not, most of our viewers on, are on YouTube. It's true. I have about 5,000 people over on YouTube, and most of those people are wonderful. All 5,000 of them are pretty wonderful. Um, it's every now and then, at least three times a week. That's how often. At least three times a week, I get some really nasty comments. Look how pretty those are. So, so pretty. I'm really feeling the tropical kind of summer vibe with these. Uh, guys, I've got to update my wardrobe. I've got to stop wearing gray t-shirts. <laughs> I need to get some summertime clothing so that all of this beautiful summertime jewelry that I'm making actually goes with the clothing instead of these gray t-shirts. I bet I have a million gray t-shirts. <laughs> Probably not, but I do have, I have way too many gray t-shirts. I need some color in my life. I'm feeling like this new um, adventure I'm going on in my life. It needs some color, don't you think? Send clothes to this address. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, those are so cute. I love them. I think they turned out really well. It makes me want to like put my hair up and put a flower in my hair and be all, you know, vacationy. I'm feeling it. It's June. It's June 1st, right? Oh, that's just sad. I'm with you. I feel sad for them. I do too. I do too. I don't understand um, why they feel the need to come after jewelry makers, but they do. I don't know why, but you know, it's just like I said, hurt people hurt people, right? Hurting people hurt other people. So you know that they've got something going on in their lives. Otherwise they wouldn't be acting that way because you know, people who are happy and at peace inside don't, don't hurt other people even people they don't like, they still manage to um, have the self-control to um, not say things, you know? If you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all. Uh, that's also a maturity sign as well. <laughs> Let's just, not everything requires your, um, your snarky comments. That's just the way it is, right? I mean, you can disagree with somebody or not like something and not have to make it known. Hawaii style. I agree. Somebody said, what new adventure? So, um, uh, um, divorce. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. Just, just to say it. I'm entering a new chapter of my life and, um, I need some color. Enough with the gray t-shirts. I need some color. <laughs> He has some color and some beautiful colory, colored earrings. And by golly, one of these days, I'm actually going to go on a vacation. I haven't been on a vacation. We didn't vacation, so I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> but I'm going to find out. And I'm going to have great jewelry to go on vacation with. All right. All right. I could go on forever. But I won't. I won't because I don't like to give fuel to the trolls who at this point haven't even made it this far anyway. So they've already left after they said something snarky. Jane says, nice ear bobs. I love it. Ear bobs. Yep. You like my ear bobs? <laughs> Super cool. All right. So that's it for today's project, at least for here. Speaking of which, I didn't mention this at the beginning, but I will mention it now. Today is the very last day if you would like to enroll in our little open window of enrollment for the hardwired paid Facebook group. Um, if you are interested in that, today is the last day. So tonight at midnight, it's cut off. If you haven't applied by midnight, you cannot get in. You'll have to wait until the next open enrollment, which is at the end of the month. And of course, I'll give you a heads up for that. So um, just so you know, um, in order to get to be a part of that, go over to the Hardwired group and send in a request. Keep an eye on your messages because Kathy will send you a message asking for your PayPal so that we can send you an invoice. Once your invoice has been paid, you will be granted access to the group. 
Tonight, or not tonight, but this afternoon, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, is the first project of the new month. It is also the first project of, or it is the project for this week. So if you get all of that taken care of today before 4 p.m., you'll actually be part of the project for the week. So um, it's okay if you don't get into the group, like if you, you can't get your invoice taken care of for a day or two, because those projects live on inside the group. So you can rewatch it on replay. It's okay. Um, just, just so you know. Um, let's see. Anything else? Wow. For some reason, I missed a lot of the comments here. Um, if you want to get to the tip jar, Joan has posted links for that. Um, just want you guys... Oh, wanted to see the dogs. I'll show you the dogs here in just a second. Um... Anything else I can think of? No, I can't think of anything else. Just know that there's a huge shop update coming this week where I'll have more findings and goodies for jewelry making, plus some amazing kits that are coming up. And I will see you guys again um, on Thursday for another project. I'm not sure what Thursday's project's gonna be yet, so I'm taking requests if you're interested. Cooper, come here. Here, come here, come here, come here, come here. So this is my German Shepherd, Cooper. Let me turn him around so you can see him. This is a baby. This is my Velcro dog. He is very, very attached to me. And he's with me constantly. And then this is Albert. Cooper, move. Come here, Albert. Uh -uh, move. Albert. Come on. Uh -oh. This is Albert. He's the pretty boy. He's a pretty baby. And he is about... He weighs about 111 pounds. He's huge. He's the biggest golden retriever that I've ever seen. And he's also my alarm clock. <laughs> so in the mornings, now that they've been sleeping in my room, when Albert decides that I have slept long enough, he jumps up on the bed and throws himself at me and licks me in the face and chews on my hair. It's quite disgusting, but that's when he decides that I've had enough sleep. And that he's tired of me sleeping. Um, so yeah, these are my two huge beasts. I've had them both. I raised them both from puppies. I got them right when they were old enough to be away from mom. So I went through the whole bit waking up with them, you know, every two hours for the first few weeks, you know, to get them house trained. It's just like having a baby. I'm serious. But yeah, I love them. I love big dogs. We have a chihuahua and I, I love small dogs too, but... I am a big dog person. So whoever, if there is another man in my life at some point, <coughs> who knows if there will be. But if there is, he must love dogs. And not only must he love dogs, he must love big dogs. Because to me, the bigger, the better. So, yeah, they are mama's boys. But, you know, it's like having a furry three-year-old constantly. <laughs> they both have an attitude. They are very handsome. Thank you. Thank you. I could not, um, there are certain things in my life I probably could not have gotten through without them. So, you know, I love them very, very much. All right. So, am I talking about you? <sighs> they would take over the entire show if I let them, I'm sure. Okay, enough of that. You guys have a wonderful rest of the afternoon. I will see some of you later at 4 p.m. over on Hardwired for a fun project. For those of you who are not part of Hardwired and you wonder what it is that we do over there, let me just show you what this week's project is so that you can kind of know. So the Hardwired group, we do a little bit harder projects than what we do here. This is what we're doing today or for the week. Whoops. Wow. So it's a wire woven pendant, just so you know. If you're having a little FOMO, this is what you're missing. <laughs> All right, that's it. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the afternoon, you guys. I will see some of you later. I'll see the rest of you on Thursday at 1 p.m. with another fun project. Until then, have a wonderful rest of the afternoon, and I will see you guys soon. Bye, guys.